Welcome, welcome. Bien, o si, bienvenido. I don't know how to say it in uh, Portuguese. Baby. How would you say good evening? Boa noite. Boa noite. That sounds Italian to me somehow. All right, let me put in my headphones. Okay, can you hear me? I have to go through this all over again. No? Okay, now, can you hear me? Okay, can somebody say something to me? Hello, Liz, how are you? Hi, Miriam, thank you. Ah, I'm feeling very encouraged. <laughs> I am not the most technically gifted person in the world, so I get nervous when my technology doesn't work. Okay, okay. welcome everybody. I, I am interested in this model how we are finding having morning sessions and evening sessions. So maybe after today, that would be a good, uh, some good feedback to get. Oops, not hearing my translation, hang on. Good, I, I hope you're, I hope you're enjoying it. I, I kind of like it myself. I, Feel like it gives some good really dig in for a day kind of thing so i'll be interested to hear your feedback when we're when we're done with this evening how are we doing with our numbers do we have most people here Don't come because not yet but mostly coming okay <clears throat> well, it's been interesting to uh, hear the feedback from the question, what college do you identify with? That's been a lot of fun for me to catch a glimpse of South America. What are some of the passion points that you carry as a, as a group of nations? We're going to work together tonight in different groups. We're going to work together in groupings of colleges that maybe have shared focus because we want to really do some practical work on setting these goals and setting these outcomes. So that's why we asked you to identify which college you, you uh, are part of and those of you who are base leaders, we'd like you to think about either where is your area of personal experience when you did lead a school, what kind of school did you lead, or what area would you say your base most emphasizes? Okay, if your base offers a number of courses, um, which college do you offer the most courses? because we'd like you to be able to participate in one of these discussion groups. Even if you're not a school leader now, it's likely that you will be involved in training school leaders and school staff in the future, okay? So when we go into small groups, that's what we'll be uh, doing, okay? Do we have everybody here now? Do we get started? Well, I'm gonna start. What I'd like to do is an unusual question, but these unusual questions get us to do unusual thinking. So I'd like you to think about how are you feeling as you come to this session, okay? What's in your mind? What's in your heart? How are you feeling as you anticipate coming? 
And I'd like you to pick a color that expresses that. Okay, so what color is this evening for you? Okay, and as you think of that color, I want you to type it in the chat. Okay, and then some of you, I may call on you and say, explain your choice. Why did you pick that color? Okay, so it'll just, it's, it's a, a way for us to connect with each other and to connect with being here tonight. So for example, I might pick the color yellow because I am really looking forward to light shining on people's path. And so I think of oh, yellow. I want this session to be yellow. Okay, so let's start adding your colors into the chat. Let's see what we've got. Red. Hmm. Silver. Ooh. Orange. Green. Blue. I, I could say some of these in Spanish, but not in Portuguese. <laughs> I hope somebody's translating as we go. Gold. Hmm. Orange. Woohoo. Orange. Turquoise. Oh, I love turquoise. You can tell. <laughs> it's my shirt. <laughs> Verde. Uh -huh. Good. What else? Good. Green. I love to hear everybody's thoughts. Lots of green. Orange. Yep. Yeah. Go ahead. I want to hear from everybody. That's a good representation. Blanco. Blanco. I wonder, is that white? Blanco is white in Spanish. White. Okay, good. So now I'm going to start calling on a couple of you. When I ask you, please unmute your mic and, and one sentence tell us what you were thinking. So let's see. How about um, Ulysses? And I'm really sorry if I don't pronounce your name properly. You can tell me if I don't. I would love to know how to say your name. That's a big deal. So my friend Ulysses, Ulysses. Yes, I hear you. Ulisses, desculpa, você está como tradutor, eu vou ter que te tirar e colocar de novo, só um minutinho. Pode oh, ok, ok. Oh, sorry, um, I picked the wrong person. But I'm glad. <laughs> não te ouço, Ulisses, e você uh -huh. já... Espera aí. Hum... Pode falar. Tradução. Muito bem, agora pode falar. Ok, ¿hablo, hablo en, qué? en inglés o en español? Puedes hablar ¿Hablo? en español. Inglés, eh, okay. en español. Ok, este, <risa> me gusta, me gusta, eh, escogí el color azul porque esta tarde llovió y llovió muchísimo y me calmé un poquito y estuvo mm. muy, muy relajado, estuvo chévere. Ah, qué okay. muy bueno, gracias. Gabriel, how about you? You picked uh, gold. Elegí el dorado por, por, por la riqueza que hay en, en este tiempo. Sin duda hay mucha, mucha riqueza y por eso elegí el color dorado. I missed, somehow I didn't get the translation. Got the general idea in Spanish, but that's good. Okay, how about I'm picking on people I don't normally get to hear from. How about Patti? Oi, estão me ouvindo? Uhum. Eu também vou yes. com laranja igual o... Desculpe, o azul igual o Ulisses. Porque o, o, o azul, ele remete a esse estado mais é, desacelerado, né? 
E hoje eu tô meio... Por causa da... que eu tô grávida, e hoje eu tô meio sinal baixo, assim, por causa do neném. Então, vou escolher... Vou optar pelo azul hoje. <risos> Ok. Thank you. Gracias. ¿Qué acerca de Dayana? ¿Qué será? Oi, gente. Boa noite. Eh, eu escolhi a ah, Diana. Além de ser minha cor favorita, é uma cor que me remete muito ao cuidado de Deus. Porque me lembra do oceano, hum. do mar. E quando eu vejo, me lembra que Deus está vendo. Né, e que ele está sempre cuidando, que nada foge do controle dele, de quem ele é, e que apesar de muitas vezes o mar ele parecer tempestuoso, no fim ele sempre é turquesa, né? Quando ele está calmo e ele é essa calmaria. Hum. Então, o turquesa me lembra cuidado. E para hoje, acho que essa é a minha palavra. Hum. Excelente. How Excelente. Vamos a ver qué dice Joe Maiseo. No sé si ella pronunció bien su nombre. Ella pregunta que si dije el nombre. De... Uh -huh. Joe Maiseo. Hola. Então, eu escolhi a cor verde porque me remete muito à esperança. Meu coração está muito cheio de esperança mm. por aquilo que eu estou recebendo durante esse treinamento. E a expectativa é que eu vou atuar de maneira melhor enquanto representante da Universidade das Nações, enquanto líder na escola. Há uma expectativa e esperança. Hum. Hum. Ah. Lovely. Great. Well, welcome, everyone. It's good to be back together again, isn't it? And looking forward to building on what God began this morning and taking us deeper. I so honor what I see and hear in you. Such a desire to grow, to increase your skills, to increase your understanding because of the, the love for God and, and the training process in the nations. I just receive that so much from all of you and so let's trust holy spirit together that we're going to come through the end of the session and look back and say that was an orange session that was a turquoise session that was a green session <laughs> so let's go ahead and start in prayer and ask holy spirit to come because the last thing we want is to have a good session We want to meet God. We want Holy Spirit to change us, don't we? That's why we're here. That's what we want. We've done everything we can to prepare a place for him. But really, that's who we're here for, isn't it? So let's bring ourselves to that attention and invite his presence. Medium, would you pray for us? Senhor, muito obrigada pela... Tua direção em todos esses dias, mas principalmente uh, por esse tempo que nós vamos ter juntos aqui hoje à noite. Obrigada, Senhor, porque por mais que estejamos uh, animados e esperançosos e prontos para receber, nós sabemos que Tu estás ainda mais pronto para nos dar de Ti mesmo primeiro e, uh, além disso, entendimento sobre todos os assuntos que nós vamos conversar. Que o Senhor nos dirija, que o Senhor nos capacite, que o Senhor abra os nossos corações para que a gente possa receber tudo aquilo que o Senhor já preparou de antemão para nós. Nós agradecemos em nome de Jesus. Amém. Amém. Well, I know this is close to blasphemy for South America, that I do not have an actual football in my hands and I'm trying to represent that with this silly little rubber ball. But wanted to remind ourselves of our story that we were thinking about earlier today, that 
when you are on a football team, your goal is to win the game, isn't it? And so you prepare yourselves for that. And there's a lot of knowledge and understanding of the game and your position. And then there's just skill development. You have to practice again and again and again how to kick, how to pass, how to see the field, how to communicate with each other. And so there's a, endless hours of skill development. And of course, the conditioning. You have to have the character, the values, the attitude. You, you can't go out there with lots of skills and knowledge if you haven't paid the price to develop yourself. There's countless hours of hard work and diligence. There is the unselfishness of I play as a team. There's the concern for the other team. You know, we don't, we don't hurt people intentionally. You know, there's just so many of those qualities that have to be within our attitudes or our character, our values to make a complete football player who is going to be able to contribute and, and work together with his team toward victory. And so if that's a picture for us, if that's a story for us, thinking about we're all on a team, <laughs> we're all trying to win, okay? What's, what's our game? <laughs> what are we trying to win, okay? In the University of the Nations, our end goal, you remember the picture of the city, how can we transform? How can we bring change? How can we be that salt and light, those influences of change within our communities? So that's, that's our goal. And so if we work hard to win a, soccer, a football game, how much harder should we work to win, win the game? <laughs> to accomplish the goals that God has trusted us with, to demonstrate who he is through each of the spheres of society that our schools are a part of. So that's where we were this morning, isn't it? So we want to pick up on that and we want to go deeper in this. Help us bring this down into where we live and where we lead. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to that question of what is your school preparing people to do and to be in the sphere of society that you are called to? Okay. So first of all, putting yourself in the big picture, you remember how Anna had the picture of the city and the, and the one little guy. <laughs> Where, where do I fit? What's my sphere of society? What is the voice that God is giving me into communities? Okay. And the, the spheres of society are connected to our colleges because that's the purpose of the colleges. That's how God formed the university is he said, what are the voices into our societies? then the purpose of each college is equipping for that voice, that sphere, isn't it? And so each of our schools is a part of equipping people to go and influence in that sphere. So the question is, in the, in the role of education, that's my college, that's where I work. So... What is my course preparing someone to do in the sphere of education? Perhaps to be a teacher. And that is one role in the sphere of education. It's not the only role. What are some of the other roles in education? Now, I happen to know Juliana is an educator because I've been working with her on some educational projects. Juliana, can you think of another role that uh, is part of working in the sphere of education? What are some other things people do 
who are working in the area of education. Got any thoughts there? Educadores sociais, né? Essas pessoas que vão trabalhar em projetos sociais, não só em escola formal. Ok. Mm -hmm. Good. Excellent. So I might be a formal classroom teacher. I might be a field-based teacher that operates out of a role of social work. And I'm going into families to help kids that are falling outside of traditional formal school. I might be a classroom assistant. I might be a school principal. I might be a curriculum developer. Okay, so there's lots of different roles in the sphere of education. And so I need to have a clear picture in my understanding. What is it that I am preparing people to do in that sphere? Because that's what helps me be clear about, wow, people need different skills if they're going to be a teacher than if they're going to be a school principal. Isn't that right? Now, that's my area, so I can tell you that's true. We've developed a whole course to train teachers. And we're developing a different course to train school leaders, school directors, school principals, you know, for little kids, not, not our, within our U of N um, uh, scope. Because a school principal has to run the business of the school. He has to work with legal issues. He has to deal with parents. He has to choose and buy curriculum. He has to set fees. He has to deal with uh, parents. He's got to deal with facilities. That's a very different set of knowledge and skills than a classroom teacher. That classroom teacher has to create lesson plans and think of, of creative, effective ways to help children learn, manage classroom behavior, okay? Different skills. What am I, who am I preparing them to be? I need to know that for my course so that I'm thoughtful intentional about developing the knowledge and the skills, they do it with me, the knowledge and the skills and the, let's use the word attitude, okay? What's in the heart. So let's go back. Now we're gonna go into our small groups that are around our shared training goals. Okay, so instead of just being in your small group where there was people from all different colleges, for tonight, we're going to use small groups where you have overlapping interests. You're all in the same college or you're in similar colleges. And I want you to identify for your school, what is one role that you are preparing someone to take in your sphere? Now, some courses are, could be preparing for several different roles. That's, that's fine. Pick one, because we're going to be thinking clearly about a specific as a way to develop our understanding and our skills. Okay? So you're going to go in your small groups now, different small groups. And I want you, I'm going to give you about 10 minutes. We'll check on, see how you're doing at about 10 minutes. And I want each of you to share, this is the school that I'm involved in. This is the role that I believe we are preparing people to take. Is that clear? Does that make sense? Any questions? É, vocês vão escolher a sala agora, tá, gente? Então, não tem a divisão de sala e vocês vão escolher de acordo com o seu colégio ou centro. Oh, okay. Good. Good. Okay. You will have a jam pad 
to work with in your group. And so I want written on the jam pad, the role that each person is equipping someone to take through their school. So there should be a list, one role for each person on your jam pad when you're done and you come back to the big group. Carlina, and list out the job titles that your school could equip people to take. As we have discussed here and done some examples, I want you to go back and add that to your jam pad. And then take the rich thinking that you've done about how you want that student to impact the community. And I want you to start thinking about what would that mean about the kind of knowledge they need to have. Okay, you don't have to list out all the facts, but you might say, well, they need to, uh, they need to understand the history of the community. They need to understand uh, all the different people groups that are present in the community and how they came to that community. That, that kind of general, what, what kinds of things would they need to know in order to do that job effectively? Then you would ask yourself, okay, so Carlina, can you put that, um, um, those, those posters up on the screen share? Yes, I can, just a minute. Then... So this is a review. We've already talked about this, but I want you to remember, go for the big picture of what do you want the impact to be like? How do we get there? Okay, if you wanna hit the target, what do you have to do? Well, I have to know about trajectory. I have to practice aiming. The skill, the value, I have to want to sink that ball in the basket, okay? so. We want to clarify our goals and then start working on what does it take to reach them, okay? And so the first one that we talk about is skills. If I want you to be an effective city planner, if I want you to be a powerful evangelist, if I want you to be a graphic designer with impact, what do you need to be able to do? Okay, and this is the... This is the doing, do this with me. Okay, these are skills, things that we can do, right? And, and again, this has to do with relational skills. Do you know how to uh, build friendships with people from other cultures? Do you know how to communicate your ideas effectively in a written form? Okay, those are skills. Anything that gets better with practice, okay? So there's relational skills, there's thinking skills, okay? Can you analyze and identify a root cause? Can you take an event and look at the implications of a decision? Okay, those are thinking skills. You can get better at them with practice, okay? What about practical hands-on skills? Can you work a PowerPoint on your computer? <laughs> Can you type? No practical skills, okay? So that's one thing, skills, okay? The next thing is what kind of attitudes, character qualities, values, what do you have to have in your heart if you are gonna be effective and change the community through that role? Okay. We all know people who have lots of knowledge and skills, and they don't do their work with love. They don't do their work with compassion. They don't do their work with integrity. Okay. Mark Brokenshire is the dean of the College of Education. And he says, if you have a thief and you give him a good education, what do you have? An educated thief. An educated thief. 
Now, how helpful is that? <laughs> it's sad but true, isn't it? Many of the most corrupt, harmful people in the world have had a top quality education. And all it did was increase their capacity to do harm. And so thinking deeply about the particular values and attitudes and character qualities that are needed in that role. Many are common to lots of roles, you know, being loving and servant-hearted and humility, you know, but think deeply about that role. What is needed in the heart to do that role in a way that brings the kind of change that we are believing for and working towards, okay? So let's put that visual back up. So you've got, what have you got? Do it with me. Okay, you've got the skills. Anything that gets better with practice. You've got your values. What is in your heart, okay? And the last thing is, the knowledge, the information, understanding <laughs> the meaning of what you know. Those are all implied knowledge. What is in your head? Okay. So what is in your hands? What's in your heart? What's in your head? Here's a little way to think about it. Okay. Can you do it? Do you know it? Do you love it? What's in your head? What's in your hands? What's in your heart? Okay. So when you go back into your small groups, we'll take about 15 minutes, then, then you can go into your break time. What I want you to do is I want you to list out the job titles and then for all of the wonderful descriptions that you had of the impact you want to have through your course, I want you to start breaking that down into what would they have to know, what kind of skills would they need, and what would need to be in their hearts, okay? And, and um, I believe there's a little chart that we're going to put in the jam pad. Is that right, Carly? Welcome back, everybody. Okay. So, we are working hard, aren't we? We are developing some new knowledge, some new skills, and hopefully, working on the the attitudes of heart of, I want to get that kind of clarity. I want to work with an increase in my effectiveness in my training. And I know that you do, or you wouldn't be here. And so this is hard work, but it brings us the answers to some of our questions. How can I be more effective? What? What can I do to see my students more equipped, more anointed, more having more impact in the communities? And this is the hard work that we do in our role as school leaders, base leaders, uh, to increase that effectiveness. So I don't mind that it's a little challenging for us. But we're, I hope we're getting there. I hope you're starting to see. Okay, okay, I can see. Okay, so we're going to keep working on these things. We're going to have a look at the jam pad and see, see how we're going on this. Someone in my group uh, mentioned that I was speaking too quickly. And so I'm very sorry about that. And I was grateful for their input. So I will try and remember to keep my pace in a 
voice that is helpful for everyone. Please feel free to wave at me or <laughs> thumbs down. <laughs> stop. Oh, Philippe, should I stop? Are we not getting translation? Oh, <laughs> you were just translating. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. Excellent. All right. Natalia, would you ask Holy Spirit to refresh us right now and help us to really gain some revelation in this next 45 minutes? Yes, sure. Um, Holy Spirit, we, we thank you for everything that you are doing for us during this time, all the things that you are planting in our hearts. And just I pray that you give us refreshment during this last session. There is so much to to get from this session and there is so much from your heart you want to give us so i pray that you give us a refreshment in our strength in our minds in our hearts that we can enjoy and we can we can have this strength for continue going on and father please give rest to our minds that uh we can be very open to what you have for us and also uh for the ones that are a little bit late they give us the strength to to keep on because Really, this really deserves your um, all of our attention. So thank you, Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Okay, you guys. So let's go after this again. Let's go deeper and let's get this in our minds and in our skills and in our hearts. Okay. So let's have a look at the jam pads and see how we're coming in our discussions. Okay. I think did we already look at this one when we when we looked at the roles before? They just add more things here. Yeah, good. I just thought to look at another jam pad so that everybody has a chance to kind of have theirs be looked at. Okay. I we looked at each one of them before. We oh, did we? Oh, okay. I didn't realize we'd gone through all of them. Okay, great. So let's look at Christian ministries. What do we have here? And please, what are, can you just yes. translate as you did before? Thank you. Uh, so some of the things here is that uh, to disciples that will be more like Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Somebody from the group can explain what maybe what I'm people... just looking for because uh, they wrote a lot of things that are not roles. Uh -huh. So uh -huh. oh, okay, so but on that, uh, like some some abilities, uh, uh, some skills. Okay. Uh, to know how to uh, preach, how uh -huh. to Good. work uh, in teams, mm -hmm. uh, planning Good. and execution of projects. As far as knowledge, different ways of uh, learning, uh, to live and learn, uh, to learn about temperaments uh, mm -hmm. and the uh, production of game, uh, cooperative games, and then some uh, values, some attitudes, humility, forgiveness, patience, diligence, integrity, character, uh, to be mer uh, a merciful character, a oh, teachable gosh. heart, Good. Uh, the fruits of the spirit, generosity, compassion, and uh, willingness. Great. And, uh, then uh, one of the things. Desculpe, eu interromper, que esse é meu grupo. Ah, tá bom. Mas é, essa parte não foi a parte dessa desse momento. A parte ah. desse momento é a que está todo de amarelo. Okay, so she's saying that the emotion is what is new, okay? So, uh, mm, so, uh, okay, so, 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 lado de cá, o lado direito é o lado onde é que realmente foi o que a gente falou agora, onde tem escrito como indicadores sociais, doutores, multiplicadores de escolas. Okay, so to be a good teacher, good parents, good mothers, 
a good counselor, oh. psychologist, mm -hmm. uh, a social assistant, a good politician. Wow. And nice. someone that will share biblical principles, artists, actors, uh, social uh, communicators, doctors, yep. and school multipliers. Okay. Yeah. Good. Sounds like it's the foundational course for many different possible roles that people could take in a community. It's wonderful. Good. And there was quite a rich range of things that you would want to know, things that they should be able to do, and then the values that have to be in the life. Okay, the attitudes. Excellent. Let's look at another one. Good thinking, you guys. Well done. Nesse slide, a gente tem uh, um outro grupo de formação cristã que está em azul, Miriam. Se você quiser ler. Oh, okay. So uh, in blue, it's uh, uh, the other group that was working on Christian ministries. So to uh, form people that will lead small groups and disciple uh, from uh, from the small groups, I guess. Uh, to uh, disciple believers for non-believers. Uh, uh, oh, so, okay. So that they will be the ones that will do discipleship with Christians and uh, with non-Christians that they will be able to present the gospel. So as far as ability, then uh, they will uh, learn how to preach, to work in teams, to plan and execute projects. As far as knowledge, that they will learn different ways of uh, learning, uh, different uh, learning ways, mm -hmm. live and learn, uh, temperaments, and right. uh, production of uh, cooperative games, and attitudes, humility, forgiveness, patience, and all the others that I already read before. Right. Good. Okay. Nice. Quite, quite a range. And perhaps I, I wonder how. Much of that you may have thought about for the first time and thought, oh, yeah, these would be some good skills. We hadn't thought about working on those in the context of our school. So perhaps it helped you to think about some new areas that you would want to develop through your school. That's my hope is it's going to give you a new focus, which will lead to new creativity. Okay, let's look at another one. Okay, so this was the counseling, and it's the part in the bottom. Uh -huh. uh, the roles yeah. would be There's counselors. All the roles, I see, yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So, uh, vocational counselors, coaching, mm -hmm. psychologists, mm -hmm. therapists, uh, mm -hmm. people that work with therapies, mm -hmm. uh, cross cultural counselor, mm -hmm. and human resources. And right. so some uh, attitudes and values, integrity, mm -hmm. love, respect, to value mm -hmm. the individual, confidentiality, mm -hmm. empathy, mm -hmm. ethics, a teachable heart, nice. uh, teach uh, a heart towards the broken and teamwork. Brilliant. Then some abilities to uh, active listening, mm -hmm. uh, Quality, empathy, respect, availability, mm. ability to solve conflicts, mm. uh, basic tools of counseling, Great. and then knowledge mm -hmm. uh, to have a biblical worldview, uh, inner healing, uh, counseling principles, uh, principles of trauma and abuse, mm. the types of personalities. Great. Intelligence Excellent. and learning. Okay. Fabulous list, you guys. I, I hope that this has helped to bring, bring together things you may have been doing and giving them new understanding, developing some new areas that maybe you hadn't thought could be a part of the goals and what you're working on in the school. Some really good thinking there. Great, let's take one more. 
Great stuff. So in the area of education, uh, they have two different uh, roles. The first one was as a teacher and a classroom teacher. So, so it's in English here. So the knowledge would be components mm -hmm. of a biblical worldview and the skills to identify mm -hmm. biblical foundation of content, mm -hmm. to present content from a biblical foundation perspective mm -hmm. and uh, character. Discipline, focus, and humility. Right. And then uh, the, the, the school of children at risk, the role would be uh, community center staff. And mm -hmm. the knowledge would be child development, mm -hmm. skills, uh, how to discipline children in a way that preserves their dignity. Mm -hmm. And character would be love to value children in all the develop developmental stages and ability levels. Great. Excellent. Excellent thinking. Good. So as you're beginning to see it broader, perhaps, and to go deeper, to think about the goals of your schools, the outcomes or objectives of your school in a new way, I hope it's adding to the clarity that you have. What are we leading towards? So the question becomes, how are we going to get there? So the final step in identifying these outcomes, which is the language that we use uh, in the University of the Nations, we talk about outcomes. And I don't know how it's being translated into Portuguese or Spanish, there's lots of different comparable words that you might use in your educational system, objectives, aims, goals, purposes. Th those words are used in a similar manner. In the University of Nations, we talk about outcomes. And, and the idea is what do we come out with? <laughs> At the end of our school, what do we come out with. So what are your goals? What are your objectives? What is your aim? The, those are all the same kind of idea. Okay. And, and we talked about hitting a wall. And we talked about making a basket. And so if we are going to work well toward a goal, it has to be a clear goal, doesn't it? So to say, I want you to know the Bible. How do I know if I met that goal? That's, a, that's an important goal and a good goal, but it's not a very specific goal. I don't know if I've reached the goal, if I am a student. I don't know how to help a student reach that goal if I'm a staff person. Okay. I don't know if my school's been effective if I'm a school leader, because I don't know how to measure the progress that we're making toward that goal. So for outcomes or goals to be helpful to us, they have to be clear enough that we can see our progress toward that goal. Does that, does that make sense? Okay, so for example, uh, my friend Daniel, I, I am his school leader and I am working with him in, um, in, an, in an SBS and we're having our one-on-one. -on -one. Are you there, Daniel? I'm here. Okay, great, great to have you in class. I'm so glad we could sit down and have a one-on-one -on -one together. Great. Yeah. You know, Daniel, I, you're just, you're just doing really great. Thank you. Yeah. You're, you just, you know, you're really nice and, and everybody likes you and, you know, just great. Wow. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Good. Okay. Well, it's been good. I'll, I'll catch up with you next time. Okay. See you later. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Daniel, you ready for your next one-on-one? -on -one?
Yes. Okay. Hey, Let's go great. For line. Yeah. You know, Daniel, uh, one of the goals for us in this course uh, is, is that we're each growing in our own Bible knowledge. But we also want to be people that can share Bible knowledge with others. Isn't that right? You remember how we talked about that? Yeah, I remember. Yeah. So, so we want you to have some knowledge, but we also mm -hmm. want you to have some skills. And we want you to really develop that compassion toward people. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Because sometimes the scriptures talk about knowledge puffs up, right? And, and people can say, oh, I'm so smart because I know the Bible. And so yeah. their Bible knowledge isn't really helping anybody else. You know what I'm talking yeah. about? Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. And so something I've really noticed about you that I really appreciate about you is I see that you are really choosing kindness and compassion toward your fellow students. Oh, thank you. That's very interesting. Yeah, and and I, I know that you are, are a good Bible student. Mm -hmm. I, I see they understand things quickly. But I see that what you do with that is you're taking time to help others with their homework and mm -hmm. and you do it in a way that they don't feel like I'm so dumb and Daniel's so smart. Wow. So you have been paying the attention. I, I have been. And that's the quality that we're calling. Um, there's two qualities. Humility. Mm -hmm. Okay. That you're not trying to lift yourself up above others, but you're trying to strengthen those around you. Mm, okay. okay and the other quality that we're trying to develop in the school we call compassion and that means uh, showing kindness toward others who are struggling mm, right yeah okay and so i see those actions i see by your actions that you're working on those qualities wow thank you yeah. so getting the objective of the school yeah. So I, I, I wanted to bring some more understanding about what we're working toward. And I really wanted you to know, I see the choices that you're making a lot better than the first couple of weeks of the school. I've, can you see the change in yourself? Yes, yes. I have seen that. I yeah. really, I'm more patient with my, yeah. my colleagues and I really enjoy the classes. Good. It's really good. Really yeah. And, and you're probably getting a lot more out of it because you're not so concerned with how smart am I? How, how do I compare with all the knowledge? Which, you know, is always a little bit of a temptation when we get started, isn't it? Yeah, that's true. That was my thought at the beginning. Yeah. And now it's changing. Yeah. Okay. So you're making really great progress on those two outcomes that we're working on. Remember what humility is? Humility is lifting others up instead of lifting yourself mm -hmm. up. And the compassion. What, how, do, how are we defining that? Um, can you repeat that again? Remember, it's showing kindness toward people who are struggling. Okay. Okay, good. So, so I see you're making real progress on those and, mm -hmm. and let's keep being intentional about that. You have a lot to contribute to the course and I know the Lord's doing a deep work in you as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank okay. you so much, Lisa. That's you're really welcome. important. Yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll see how we're going next week, okay? Okay, see you next week. Great, good. Okay, thanks, Daniel. So I asked Daniel to do this skit with me. Now, Daniel, what, how, how were those two interviews different for you? A lot of differences. Um, in the first one, I could notice that you, you were kind of in a hurry because you didn't have time for going to details mm -hmm. so maybe you have something else to do after mm -hmm. our mm -hmm. meeting mm -hmm. in the second one i could notice that you really take time to to reflect on what you were going to say to me before mm -hmm. before you meet me you take mm -hmm. the time you really okay. uh, get those uh, specific things that you wanted to encourage me on okay. so i see preparation good Okay, how about some of the rest of you? What are some of the things that you noticed were different maybe in the content of what I said to Daniel? What, how, were, how was I different in, the, in between the two skits?
maybe uh, just you can go ahead and just uh, unmute yourself and share. What what did you see? What were some of the differences? É, foi muito notório a diferença que a Lisa trouxe. Ela trabalhou na primeira conversa. Ela não trabalhou uhum. nenhum dos três pontos, né? Então, na, na segunda conversa, teve todo o foco, uhum. teve toda é, habilidade, conhecimento, uhum. ela puxou isso, ela extraiu isso uhum. do aluno, uhum. né? Trazendo essa visão, uhum. né? Então, isso Great. traz total diferença. Muito obrigada. Ok, great, thanks. Terrific. Anyone else? What, what did you see that, that I did different in terms of the content of the interview? You know, we, we could talk a lot about how to do one-on-ones and that's not the purpose of that the skit at the moment, but the content, how was the content different in between the two? Lais brought out some great points. Any, anyone else, some, something else to add? In the okay. first, first one, you didn't address anything specific. It's just say, oh, just okay, like just general. Yeah. Yeah. In the second one, you pointed a specific points to work on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I made it one observation, usually, maybe a, like someone from Latin America would be mm -hmm. okay with the first one. What is that? <laughs> well, at least I am okay. <laughs> Good. And it's something that we need to work on as <laughs> Latin American. <laughs> okay. So Michelle said um, you gave specific feedback about specific behaviors, okay? So what did you notice about how different that was for Daniel? How do you think he came away? What was the different impact that had on him? You, you mentioned the first one, he felt okay. Like, oh, I'm okay, that's, that's good. I'm glad I'm okay. How did he feel after the second one? Okay, Miriam's feedback. He was encouraged to grow even more. How do you how did you feel, Daniel? What was your experience at the end of the second one? Yeah, I felt seen, like mm -hmm. uh, you're mm -hmm. really paying attention to my progress. Mm -hmm. You're not just the leader, but you you became um, like a, an equal for me. And mm -hmm. you really, yeah, I feel seen by you. And, okay, uh, good. I, yeah, I, I can also have, I also have clarity on mm -hmm. what are you expecting from me? Mm -hmm. Good, good. How's your motivation level? Way up, yeah. It's, it's like, I, I want to keep encouraging my, uh, my uh, colleagues and I want to keep uh, teaching mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. how to understand okay. you know, with a humble heart, yeah. Okay, good. Okay, and then Michelle said, I didn't just give him my opinion, like, oh, I think you're doing good, but I showed him very specific ways that he was moving, making progress towards specific goals, okay? So I chose this area of the, the attitudes and values because a lot of times that's the hardest area to have clear goals, isn't it? And when you say, well, you're, you're humble, somebody goes, okay, I don't know what that means. Does that mean I'm quiet? Does that mean that my, I, don't, I keep my eyes down or that I dress modestly? What, what do you mean? Because sometimes we say, you're not very humble. You know, you're in trouble because you're not humble. It's like, well, I don't even know what humble looks like. I don't even know what you're expecting. Okay. And so if I come and go, well, you know, you're just, you're, you're just unteachable. That doesn't really help somebody grow, does it? To, so to say, okay, the, what we want to do with all of our outcomes is to turn them into goals that we can all work toward together and that we can measure our progress toward them. 
how do I know if I've grown in humility by the end of the school? I didn't even know what that meant. I didn't know what that looked like. So I, I didn't know how to pray about it. I didn't know how to reflect on my own behavior. I didn't, like I just didn't make any progress in humility because I didn't know what the goal was. Okay. And so having, and, and so it's very painful when someone says, well, you're not humble. Well, now I feel hurt. I feel like I'm humble. You're just being mean and critical and judging me. <laughs> See, so having goals means it's something you can measure. You can observe it and measure it. Okay. And so saying, well, what is, how are we going to define compassion? In our school, we're talking about showing kindness toward people who are struggling. So we're not making a law and saying, I'm going to tick off. You didn't do your act of kindness today, but I'm encouraging you and saying, what are some acts of responses of kindness toward those who are struggling? Well, it might be coming along and offering to help. It might be offering an encouraging word when you see that they're sad. It might be leaving a little gift. It might be sharing a story with them about your own struggles. There's many ways to show kindness towards someone who's struggling. But our goal in the school is that we grow in compassion. Because otherwise, knowledge puffs up and love builds up. And so as we're learning Bible knowledge and the skill of how to preach and do Bible study effectively. We want to be growing in that heart attitude, that value toward others of compassion. And so we're going to work toward that in our school and help cultivate that in one another. See, does that make sense? And then when you come to evaluation and come to say, how are we progressing toward that goal? You can say, well, you know, boy, I can see that person is still, they're being sarcastic. They're comparing their scores with everybody else. They're teasing somebody because they didn't get the right answer. That Those are some behaviors that aren't growing toward our goal of compassion. I'm going to go talk about those behaviors, and I'm going to talk about moving toward that goal. Okay, instead of just saying, you're really mean, people don't like you. And the person feels hurt or angry or defensive instead of, you remember, we talked about moving toward a goal of compassion. How would you define that? What are some actions that are expressing kindness toward people that are struggling? How do you feel some of your actions might be moving toward that goal or not moving toward? Toward that goal. See, so you've got something to work with that's concrete. And so setting those character goals, those value or attitude goals, we have to ask ourselves, how are those expressed in our actions and our words? How can I help people move toward that heart shift as it is expressed in our actions and words. So we're looking for clear definitions of knowledge. How do I know if you know this? Can you explain it? Did you answer the questions right on the test? You know, you can measure the knowledge. How about the skills? How do I measure the skills? Well, they put the thing together properly. <laughs> they gave their Sunday morning message and the uh, language was clear, the volume could be heard toward the end of the room and they made eye contact with the audience. Those are the observable skills that I can say you gave a clear presentation. Do you see what I'm saying? So you're looking for, I've got goals or outcomes. How do I express those in observable behavior? So that everybody knows what we're working toward. Everybody can measure their own progress. And I can come alongside as a leader and give honor where it's due, as the scripture says, and hold up the mirror. And the scripture also talks about, don't look in the mirror and walk away unchanged. 
They, so you are helping people evaluate their own progress toward clear goals. So our job as leaders is to have enough clarity. Where do I want people to end up? How do I help them get there? With clear expectations, clear encouragement, clear instruction and, and help when they're struggling. Does that, does that help? Are you starting to see how this all fits together? Maybe your brains are getting <laughs> tired. I was going to have you go back into your small groups and work with your outcomes that you already identified. I think instead, I'm going to keep us together and give some time for a question and answer and see if there's anything you'd like to ask that will help bring some more clarity for you. Posso? Well, either. Ok, go ahead. É, acho que eu posso só ajudar pensando um pouquinho no grupo que eu estava. Se vocês perceberem, o que a Lisa está trabalhando é aquilo que muitas vezes é um... Se alguém puder traduzir para a Lisa no canal em... Michelle está aqui? Não. Acho que a Michelle teve que ir. Ah, está aqui. Então, pronto. Lisa, Michelle can translate to in the English channel. É, se vocês perceberem o que a Lisa está fazendo, é, levando a gente... Sabe aquela parte do formulário de registro que vocês ficam assim, o que, que a gente coloca aqui? Para onde é que a gente vai? Então, o dia de hoje, ele é todinho sobre como é que a gente está formando os nossos alunos na mente, no coração e com as mãos. Para que, que a gente está formando eles? Uhum. Né? E eu sei que para a nossa cultura... A gente hum. não tem o costume de fazer, é, de pensar dessa maneira. Qual é a função? Para que profissão a gente está treinando essas pessoas? Né? E eu falei isso para ela hoje no intervalo. Dá esse tilt. Mas agora a gente tem uns minutos para parar e fazer perguntas. É, você pode dar exemplos de coisas que você gostaria de pôr? Ah, então isso aqui é conhecimento, isso aqui é habilidade. Ah, isso aqui é caráter. Como é que você acha que a gente pode medir tal coisa, qual ferramenta a gente pode usar no aprendizado, né? Então, eu queria te encorajar, porque eu sei que tem pergunta. A gente está no último segundo da quarta-feira, acabando, todo mundo cansado. Mas eu queria te encorajar a parar um minutinho e a fazer perguntas para a Lisa, porque ela é a melhor pessoa para responder isso para a gente hoje. Então, vamos pensar nisso, né? Quando ela abre esse leque de oportunidades, quando ela faz toda essa apresentação e mostra para a gente, vocês não têm só que copiar e colar os resultados da sua escola. Você tem que parar e pensar o que, que você está gerando para você criar um ambiente para isso. Que pergunta vem na sua cabeça? Né? Então, vamos, pensa um minutinho aí, mas aproveita esse tempo para fazer pergunta, tá, Joia? Yeah, Miriam. I just want to make a comment because the when we have on the planning of the school, if we had time to think through the things that you mentioned, uh, then if we communicate uh, this uh, very clearly to our students, not only we will be able to evaluate them better, but they will know what they are being mm. evaluated throughout the school. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, it's another step to communicate to the students uh, all these things as well. Yeah. And, and this isn't the end of our training. Okay. This is another step. And so getting the clarity of what am I aiming for, then the next question is, how do I get there? And we'll get into that in our next session. How do I use all of the tools available to me through our U of N courses? 
how do I use all of that creativity with the learning styles and the activities? So, so that's a different question, but using all those things just to make class interesting isn't as effective as having very clear goals and then being able to find the best way to reach them. There's lots of ways. That's where your creativity comes into play. That's where your culture and your students, you're going to create something special and unique every time you run the course. Your goals remain the same, but the way you get there is your own joyful discovery together. But you don't want to wander off the path and go, oh, we had a nice time, but we didn't end up at the right goal. I was heading for Sao Paulo and I ended up in Rio. It was a lovely journey, but you didn't get where you wanted to go. <laughs> so we have to have that clarity about where am I going? And then we have the creativity and the diversity of all the different ways to get there. So we will get to that part, but we have to start with the clarity of where are we going? Uh, I have a comment as well. Uh, I'm just, I just opened here the last registration of the school I work with. I just want to go again oh. through all the outcomes and just think of how to measure it because although we can measure some clearly others is like uh Good. we don't focus so much or we don't have like this clear goals and um, mm -hmm. therefore we fall back a little bit with evaluating those for example yeah. we know yeah. generally what character attitude we want to uh, reach but we don't have it clearly in order that we can encourage so it's really cool to hear that and now i'm I just want to go through everything again and to Great. check and Great. think on how to measure and how to encourage students because I think it really changes the whole approach of the thing. So thank oh, that's you. That's great. Claudia. Very helpful. Excellent. And we will do a whole a whole day at least on mm. assessment because right. assessment is is gonna drive, it's like the engine that drives it, right? Mm. And we measure what we value. And so creating really effective, life-giving, fair assessment is so central to the learning mm -hmm. process. It's not the end that you tag on at the end and go, oh yeah, what exam questions do I put? It's, it's an important part of the discipleship course development process. So we'll spend quite a lot of time on that. And that'll bring so much understanding and joy and faith. Okay, so we're starting with the goal. Then we'll talk about how we work toward it. And then we'll talk about how do we effectively measure our progress? And what do we do when we realize we're not progressing the way we want to? How do we change so that we can keep moving? So we'll get there. Not, not tonight, but those are important questions and we're going to give them some time. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Perguntas, comentários? Ou então provocações como a que a Claudinha fez para todos nós, né? Voltar para os nossos registros. É o tempo que a gente tem para isso. Eu tenho um comentário. Olha, hoje... Ou oh, talvez hoje... vocês tenham hambre ou estão cansados. <risos> talvez. Hoje foi difícil, não foi nem por causa do cansaço, nem por nada. É que as informações fizeram a gente pensar muito em coisas que a gente não tinha pensado antes. Eu estou falando por mim, pelo meu grupo, que a gente estava conversando. Tem coisas que a gente ficou tipo, cri, cri, como assim? A gente tentava ser mais, um exemplo, trabalhando com a ETED, seja mais específico, gente, ser mais específico do que ser um discípulo de Cristo, como é isso? Então, é, isso ainda é um desafio, um exemplo para mim agora. É, eu, eu entendo 
tudo que foi falado, mas eu não consigo ainda processar totalmente. Eu ainda estou trabalhando, por quê? Por exemplo, hoje você me pergunta, né, Ted? Diga de forma mais específica, pode ser que eu ainda erre. Eu não sei como, como falar. Eu preciso ainda processar, mas essa foi uma dificuldade que eu ainda tenho. Apesar de que você foi extremamente clara, Lisa. Assim, mas imagine você passar tanto tempo sem, tendo uma informação nova. Essa é uma informação nova para mim. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Então, é difícil quando você recebe essa informação e você diz assim, agora pense sobre isso. Gente, como é que pensa por algo que eu nunca pensei assim? Vamos, vamos arrumar as ideias. Então, é nesse processo é. que eu estou. E se você puder aclarar mais ainda depois, ou quando seja possível, seria interessante para a gente um exemplo que trabalha com o EPED. Uhum. Como ser yeah. mais específico do específico? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just love your, your attitude, Ana Celeste. I love how honest you are. And when my little boy, my youngest one, went to preschool, I was a, you know, went and helped the teacher and stuff. And I was teaching a little group of four-year-olds math, you know, the first ideas about counting. And my little boy put his head down on the table and he burst into tears and he cried and he cried. And I said, honey, what's wrong? I said, I don't know it. I can't do it. And I said, sweetheart, of course you can't. That's why you're in school, honey. And we're going to learn it together. You don't need to feel sad because you don't know it. You can be excited that you're learning something new. How many of you have been to soccer practice for the first time all season? What happens at the end of practice? What happens when you wake up the next day? Anybody? Clever is with his hands up. Okay, Clever, what happens? Eu tive muita dificuldade. É, quando a gente estava criando uma escola. E nós tínhamos... E todas essas perguntas vieram à tona. Hum. Aí eu percebi... Entendeu? Aí eu percebi que eu não sabia porque até agora eu vinha reproduzindo aquilo que eu ouvi. Eu não tinha pensado no que eu estava fazendo. Hum, hum. E aí, quando eu comecei a pensar naquilo que eu estava fazendo, eu comecei a pensar nas implicações disso. Eu disse, caramba! Então, o que eu acho que está acontecendo hoje é que, pela primeira vez, muitos de nós estamos sendo convidados a pensar na raiz daquela escola. Yes. E a raiz da escola é que vai dar o tronco, as folhas, as flores e o fruto que a gente está buscando. That's right. Mas começa That's right. lá naquela perguntinha, o que, que você quer com essa escola? Yes. Né? Então, eu acho que a gente está saindo desse lugar onde eu reproduzo aquilo para ir para o lugar onde eu penso mm. sobre aquilo. Porque eu hum. penso sobre aquilo, eu sou capaz de medir, de avaliar, de mensurar resultados e de corrigir. É. E de corrigir. Então, eu acho que o que está acontecendo aqui é maravilhoso, porque a gente vai expandir, sabe? A gente vai para um lugar muito bacana. Mas é mesmo, galera. Eu realmente me senti o mais ignorante de todos. É bem por aí. Hum. <laughs> Perhaps you feel like my little boy. You're going to put your head on the table and cry. I don't know this. I can't do this. <laughs> yeah. E os leões falavam assim, mas é simples. Não era não. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Maybe simple, but not easy. <laughs> yeah. I, I am just so impressed with you guys. I am so impressed because this kind of humility speaks about a depth that you have in who you are in the Lord, a depth of your calling that you are willing to do the hard work of saying, this is what I haven't done. This is what's hard for me to do, but I want to do it. And I honor that so much. My goodness. It, it's like speakers who come to your school and they seem like everything's perfect in their lives and they're so amazing. And we can end up feeling so discouraged because we're here and they're here. Is that right? But when you know these people and you know their story, it, it's true. That's who they are now. But they've been working on it for 20 years. <laughs> and it was painful along the way. They didn't always know how to do this. They didn't always have all that wisdom and skill. And, and so there's a starting place for everything. The Lord says, don't despise the day of small beginnings. And, and like children, my, I have grandchildren and they live near me. And I adore those little boys. And I, I don't look at them and say, you are a retarded 12-year-old. What is wrong with you? Why can't you ride a bike? Why can't you do this or that? I cherish and delight every silly little thing, every little attempt they make. Because every step of development is, is precious and should be honored for what it is, which is somebody on their way, moving toward maturity. And so I long to know that each of you is walking away tonight thinking, wow, these are new things, things that I haven't done before, new skills, new ideas, new values. But you walk away filled with hope. It's a green day. It's an orange day. It's a yellow day. Okay. The opportunity to grow the challenge, the invitation. So it's not a day to feel discouraged with realizing, oh, I'm not there, but a day of joyful discovery. Wow, there's so much more. And I have the beginning of an idea about how I can move toward that. That's the purpose of tonight. Not, oh, this is hard. I can't do this. I didn't know that. But wow, look at all the possibilities. Okay, because we talked about the roots. If your roots go down deep and the things that Claver was describing, he is going to be so much more fruitful and effective in his school leadership going through this process. So I really honor you guys. And I hope the takeaway tonight, you still feel like it's a green day, a yellow day, an orange day. <laughs> Yeah, I see. Hands up. Gabriel. I can't hear you, friend. Oh, there you are. Sí, quería, bueno, expresar mi gratitud al Señor por este tiempo. Yo creo que somos muy privilegiados de poder parar, de poder... Eh, tener este tiempo de reflexión junto yo creo que ha sido tan lindo los tiempos tanto de, de enseñanzas como de, de procesamiento eh, veo tanto a Dios en todo lo que han compartido aunque a cosas parecieran muy, muy académicas pero hay tanto de Dios en todo esto de, del planificar del, del, del carácter de las habilidades del pensar, del corazón eh, sinceramente me siento tan tan fortalecido y renovado también por este tiempo de, de junto a todo este hermoso grupo de poder pararnos para pensar para escuchar el corazón de Dios y para tomar pasos prácticos no yo creo que 
eso ha sido lo, lo más lindo de todo este tiempo, quizás ha sido desgastador un poco físicamente hablando, pero yo creo que espiritualmente ha sido tan enriquecedor, tan, tan oro como decía yo, tan, tan color oro de esto, y, y, y sí, doy gracias al Señor por, por eso, porque veo el cuidado de Dios en todo este, esta charla y estos tiempos y, y por todo lo que se nos viene. I missed the translation right there at the end, but Gloria a Dios. Me gusta. And you're probably thinking about what you think about what he's saying. Mm. 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 Okay, I'm glad. Okay, friends, it's uh, past our bedtime. <laughs> Time to uh, probably for you go have dinner, right? Your Latin. <laughs> But after practice, you wake up the next morning, you're stiff and sore, right? Because you're using new muscles, pushing yourself to build new capacity. So if the brain is tired, it's okay. It means. Bem, se o cérebro de vocês estiver cansado, mas depois de uma prática. Tired from using your brain? I hope your heart is expanded, your mind is expanded, because we're going to develop some new capacities. Our leadership is going to be more effective, and our schools are going to be more fruitful. Our students are going to be better equipped, and our nations are going to be more deeply transformed. So it's worth the price we pay, isn't it? And we're going to get there together. We're not alone. We're never alone. We've always got the Trinity right there. We've always got our YWAM family there. God has been moving us so powerfully and so clearly in these last years about doing things in team. And I know that your culture values relationship. I also know that your culture has had a model of leadership that is leaders at the top and everybody else is down here and we're trying to shift that and just say let's do things together there's a power in working together our shared humility makes room for our shared care for one another sharing our capacities to strengthen one another so that we grow together so god bless you guys i hope it's been a rich time for you i know it has been for me and uh Let's dig in and for our homework, I would like each of you for your school to identify two things you want students to know, two things you want them to be able to do, and two attitudes you want to cultivate in them. Okay? And, and try to express them in a way that you could, they could tell and you could tell that they're progressing toward it. Okay, so try, just try. There's not one right answer, but take what we've done together here and bring it down into your own school and your own leadership. Okay, wrestle with it, do the best that you can with it. Talk to each other about it. Reach out to your small group leader about it. And, and let's, let's try working with this individually. That's what homework is, isn't it? Work on this at home. Bring this down into your own capacity building. And then you'll know what the questions are, won't you? Okay? Great. So good to be with you guys. Let's go ahead and close because really it's a lot of knowledge, a lot of skills, but really isn't it such a precious work of Holy Spirit? Isn't this what Holy Spirit is doing in us? He doesn't just fill our heads with knowledge. He works with all of us. Love the Lord your God, your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength. All of us is going in the same direction toward the same goal, and we're going there together. So, Lord Jesus, thank you for this beloved YWAM family, for these men and women who are pouring their lives out in sacrificial service for the glory of God, 
to serve those around them, to, to lift them up and allow them to go forward in their calling with the knowledge and the skills and the character that they need to be so effective to fulfill the de destiny, the calling that you've put in each heart. And here are these leaders that are washing the feet. Here are these leaders that are putting in so much time and so much effort to prepare a learning environment, a learning community, and a learning process that serves each student, that equips them for that calling you've put into their hearts. So bless these dear ones, Lord. Feed them. They are no doubt weary from their labors. Feed them, strengthen them, refresh them as we are together. And as we are considering these things, this is how you lead us. This is what you're doing in our lives. Help us to reflect on you as our school leader and to draw from that the hope and the wisdom creativity and the joy to lead well following in your footsteps in jesus name amen thank you lisa you are so welcome guys you're becoming so precious to me <laughs> yes, to you. okay so lisa just to, fi to finalize are going to have another homework or just what you just ask us to reflect it? Yeah, let's do that. Let's, uh, for the homework for your school or the school that you are most familiar with, if you're a base leader, what are two uh, areas of knowledge, two areas of skill, and two areas of attitude or value that you want your school to develop in your students? And think about the way you communicate them so that you're communicating, you're setting those goals in a way that you can measure the progress toward them. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to write on the WhatsApp. Don't worry, we'll be there. Yep. And see you in two weeks, guys. Thank you. Bye bye.